all right hi again guys welcome back to trevina's space so what we're going to be making today i'm going to be making sawfish fritters or what we like to call it in the most the more professional name is stamp and go but we jamaicans do it as sawfish fritters so seasonings i'm going to put into the well first seasoning today i'm going to put some green pepper right there or sweet pepper i should say not green pepper um some onions some garlic some thyme and some scallion of course and of course you like to have colors when you're cooking but right now i just have the green sweet pepper so we're gonna use that but if you like you can you know whatever colors you have when you um so whether the yellow red whichever it even makes the features look a little more attractive you know them say color right and of course we have our salt fish over here boiling away so it's been on the stove for about 10 minutes now and basically what we're doing when we add the salt fish we're just trying to take away some of the saltiness from the salt fish so we'll have it boiling here and you're going to boil it for about 10 to 20 minutes and once you're done with that then you're just going to take it out of the water rinse it off with some fresh water and then pick it apart all right, so while we're waiting on the sawfish to finish boil, I'm going to cut up the seasoning and start putting the stuff together for the batter. All right, so we're going to go ahead and cut up all the seasonings. Just cutting up the onion real small. Another thing that you can do if you don't want to sit and cut up all this onion, if you have a food processor, you can just pour it in, um, just make big chops and put it in a food processor and just puree it for a couple of seconds and then you can use it that way. But I can go ahead and show you how I cut it up. We have the time here. No, I don't put the entire time into the into the pot. What I do is just pick the leaves from the time and throw it in there. So you just strip off the leaves like this. Right? And pour it in there. Now we're using fresh seasoning because I think it's best. Of course, if you have the dry herbs, it will you it will be just the same. But we're using the fresh thyme leaves. Okay. Right, so we're finishing with the thyme. Now I'm gonna go ahead. Of course, you can scrape up all of this and pour it into your container. Now we're gonna put some garlic. Now, fun fact about me: when I'm cooking, I use a lot of garlic. I love garlic. So anytime I'm cooking, you will notice that I use a lot of garlic in all of the dishes that I do. So I'm going to use about four or five pegs of garlic. Simplest way to just to press down on the garlic and the peeling the garlic is that's the simplest way of peeling the garlic. It's just to press down on it and then you just Remove the coat, the coating, right? So simple as that. Oh, turn over the garlic. Really simple, see? Oh, 
comes out really simple once you have done that. Then we're just gonna put it together and mince them up. Now the best way to do this I always tell person is when you're cutting up stuff with a knife and you're trying to mince it, you don't move the knife around on the cutting board, you keep the knife in one stable place and you just move the hilt of the knife. Where you're holding, you move it up and down to mince up stuff. That way you have more control over the knife and you're not going to be moving the knife all about the place and you might end up cutting yourself. Right? So we're gonna cut up the onions and yes I know we use scallions but as I said I love when my stuff is seasoned that's one of the things you you realize about Jamaican cooking we put a lot of seasoning in our stuff and a lot of us who tell us that we really don't measure stuff so you're not wasting with taking out and saying oh a cup of onions or stuff like that I saw a meme once that says when Caribbean and Jamaican persons are cooking our measurement is the spirit. We just wait until our ancestors tell us, all right, that is enough, and then we stop. And it's kind of true because we really don't measure. So I'm using one medium onion and just chopping it up. And then I'm going to cut them and mince it up the next day. So we're trying to get small pieces into the batter. We don't want them too thick or too big. All right, so we're gonna continue. Just finishing up with the onion. And as I said, turn it sideways and mince it. You notice my knife is not leaving the board. I'm just using the handle and moving it up and down to cut the stuff. It's the safest and best way to chop up your stuff so that you're not moving the handle, or the knife around, I should say, and possibly end up cutting yourselves. The last thing we're going to do, we're going to use a pea, um, just about a quarter of this sweet, um, sweet pepper. Of course, you're taking out the insides. It's already washed and clean. And then you're going to cut them in strips, cut it in strips. Once you've cut it in strips, then you're going to mince them just as you did before with the other fresh veggies. Now our salt fish is basically finished, so I'm going to be turning off the stove now. Then once I'm finished cutting up this sweet pepper, I'm going to go ahead and rinse it off, put it in some water so it can get a little bit cool so that we can pick it apart to put it into the batter. Now this is something that we normally, this um, fritter is something that we normally do for like breakfast. So it is really simple to complete. That's it. All right, so this is it when we're finished cutting up all the seasoning. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna try to measure the amount of flour we use. So I'm gonna use um, equal parts 
whole wheat flour equal parts white flour so I'm going to use um, one cup right so this is a quarter cup so it's four of this so that's one two three And you want to level off the whole wheat flour as much as possible because we don't want too much in the batter but I generally when I make this I normally mix the whole wheat and the all-purpose white flour. Well, for the white flour you can use heaping spoons so as I said this is a quarter cup so this is one, two, three, so that's one cup that's one cup so one heaping cup of white flour and one cup of whole wheat flour I'm then going to so I'm then going to put some salt so I'm going to use one a half a teaspoon of salt don't want too much because remember that the salt fish is already salted so you don't need too much salt and then I am going to put one teaspoon of paprika so we have the paprika there okay so one teaspoon of paprika Also going to be using Maggi seasoning. See, it's a big container. So I'm going to use two teaspoon of that. Probably use three teaspoons. And then to use a teaspoon of black pepper and one tablespoon we're going to use one tablespoon of no sorry two teaspoons of baking powder that's all you're gonna put in the batter all right all right so remember I said that we really don't measure things here but for the purpose of the video that's why I measured out the ingredients so that you can have at least an idea of what it is so I'm gonna put aside the flour mixture for right now and then I'm going to be dealing with the salt fish so I'm going to be dealing with the salt fish so I'm just going to take it out of the pot all right so this is how it looks when we prep, when we buy our salt fish out here it doesn't come already pre um, picked and stuff so I'm going to clean it up and get ready to use it in the batter So, I'm just going to clean off the, see the water running off, just going to use a knife and clean off all of the skin from the, the selfish. This is how I normally do it, now everybody has their own way but this is how I normally do it, then you remove the ends. So I just break part of it off. I don't normally have to take off all of that white section of it, just try to take off the skin and the scale from it. And then once you've done that, flip it over and it sometimes has on this 
layer. So you just want to take that out. And then you just pick it apart. Oops. <laughs> and you put it in your, your mixture. Now, as I said before, I think this is about roughly 260 grams of salt fish. Very big bones, you want to just take them out and drop them in there. Alright, so we're gonna finish the rest of the salt fish here. Put that aside. Finish scraping off the skin and all of that from the salt fish. Because that's not to be eaten. you're through doing that and then just like before I'm just going to pick the saltfish apart and drop it in the bathtub in the flour mixture very simple very easy out that big section of the bone, no matter way, we don't need that, and that's it. Now, I always take out the piece, the leaf. but that's where all it's done. That's it. So, I'm just gonna clean up the area now and then add the liquid to it. Yes, I've cleaned up the area, so I'm just going to mix in the salt fish with the flour mixture. Now, while we're doing this, I just put on the pot with some oil to get the oil all heated because we don't want to throw this mixture in a cold oil. So just mixing it up to coat the salt fish and then we're going to add the liquid again I do not normally measure it but for the video sake I'm gonna try so I have a two cups of water here so I'm gonna throw about a cup in first right and see how that's working out no you don't want the consistency too thick but you don't want it to be runny either so we're definitely gonna need more water here so we're possibly going to use our two cups One thing with me first is always to try you know, your food is always so tastes so good what you're putting it like I don't think I do anything different except I think I use a lot of seasoning I tell persons that I don't skim on the seasoning you know some persons will use half an onion and stuff and they're not going to catch me doing that sometimes I use two three onions depending on the size I like it when my stuff is well seasoned So generally when I do salt fish fritters I always put whole wheat and white flour together I just like the texture of it so you can try we're gonna need a little more water so I use the entire two cups of water there to do this as I said you don't want it to be too thick and you don't want it to be runny either so after we fully incorporated this by the time we're done doing this, the oil should be ready. So this is kind of the consistency I need. is ready and waiting to go into the pot all right as I said the batter is done 
and we're just gonna go ahead and pour it into the oil right so you just take up a little spoon you don't want them to be too thick either and then you pour it into the pan now this is kind of awkward for me because I'm using one hand 